Mark. Welcome back to Hikir Kazao, issue number five, Punished by Crime, part three. Salia dodged left, then right, to avoid the rubble and gunfire being directed at her. Humanity's last stand had shown up to finish the hunt they had started. However, the Lama had decided it was in their best interest to fight back. It was then that Salia discovered what she thought might be another totem ability. Either the HLS were horrible shots, or something was keeping their projectiles from reaching intended targets. Not a single Lama suffered under a barrage of fire from the humans. This led to some of the HLS racing up to confront the Lama in close quarter combat. To Salia's extreme delight, Globs of Spit knocked those getting too close to the ground or back several yards. As she doubled over in laughter, some of the humans decided the Warren would make a better target. Snarfs! She screamed in surprise. You know I'm a monk. Also, I'm cute. Damage me and my girlfriend will not be happy. Shut up and die already. One of the humans shouted, firing off several rounds from a very impressive looking shotgun. Salia had to tap a few energy runes to give her some added protection against the gunfire. She had been extremely lucky. It helped that the group was unhinged after failing to round up Gertrude, let alone others of her herd. You know, she mocked, that counts as a threat of bodily harm. Like it or not, I'm going to have to send you to a local detainment facility. She sprinted behind a wall and listened. A few members of the park rangers were rushing the HLS, firing arrows into their ranks. When it sounded less chaotic, she parkoured up to the roof top of a building so she could survey the remaining enemies. Hello, said a voice as she peeked over to see if the roof was clear. A blinding flash went off in her face, causing her to release her grip. She fell two stories to the pavement below. The wind rushed from her lungs as stars floated in front of her obscuring her regular field of view. Pain raced through her head, and she heard someone jump down beside her. Instinct took over as she rolled away and positioned herself into a crouch. She tried to balance herself, but lost balance instead. What did you do to me? she asked as her stomach heaved, causing her to lose her lunch. Your vision will come back, said the voice, and then, and when it does, let your Sisters know that our plan worked to perfection. The llama escaped, Salia said, running her hands through her hair. Clumps of mane came away in her hands. My hair? We'll be fine, the figure said, as Salia's vision came back into some semblance of focus. In fact, you will be better than you have in the last twenty years. Olive skin, brown hair, and no more urges to howl at the moon. What? Salia raced to a window of a shop and looked at her reflection. Her clothes were hanging loosely on the frame of an image that she had not seen in decades. No longer was a light coat of fur adorning her skin. The once wild mane of white hair was a flat golden sheen. She was aware no more. Staring back at her was the wood elf she had been long ago. And now, the stranger said, coming up behind her, with a clawed girl ready to strike, you are easy prey. Swiping down, the human barely missed Salia as she stepped aside. Just because you turned me back into an elf doesn't mean I'm not still a monk, she said, darting us inside a nearby store. The goblin behind the counter seemed shocked as she grabbed duct tape and started wrapping it around her waist, into her pants and shirt. The mystery human followed her, making wild jabs with a sword, which she easily dodged as she prepared to teach her foe a lesson. Missed. Missed again. My girlfriend is going to love this new look. That is, until I find a way to get my wolf back. How? You should be off balance. In shock. Written enraged. The human seemed confused. Shrugging, Salia grabbed a fishing pole and turned to face the human. You have no idea how long I've been a monk, do you? I began training before I wolfed out. But still, she whacked the human in the side with the pole. Are we going to fight? I mean, you went through all that trouble to put me off balance. Sure, I'm a little off, but I'm also ready to kick your sorry tush all over the shop. Hey, 
the goblin shouted. The storekeeper was now wielding a rather impressive-looking axe. It's my store, and if you two are going to trash it, then I'm going to help mop the floor with a jerk, scaring away my helpers for the day. A giggle escaped Salia as she entered a monkey pose to flex her hand at the human. I love this city, she said as the door opened again. Ariane and Casal both rushed in. The looks on their faces switched from shock to joy to concern all in an instant. Let's see, Salia said. Three elves and a goblin berserker versus a human way out of his depth. I like our odds, the human growled. He sheathed the sword, holstered his gun, and vanished. Salia was left with her sisters and more questions and answers. Well, you two, don't stand there gawking. I need to get a new wardrobe. Also, I need help figuring out what to tell Snow Song. And with that, I will see you all in the near future for issue number six. And thank you for listening. <laughs>